Hello everybody, today I want to talk about how to tell the difference between a permutation and a combination if you get one of these in a GRE question. So, the wording kind of is the key. So permutation we usually get wording like the number of ways we can do something, the number of arrangements that we can make. In combinations we often talk about like sets or groups. The key distinction is that for permutations order matters order matters. In other words, if I seat five people in five chairs, and I try to count how many ways can I seat those five different people in five chairs, every single one of those ways is a different way. That's a permutation. And if we don't care about the order, so order doesn't matter, that would be like if I was saying something like, how many groups of three can I make out of a group of seven? And if I think about the group of three that I'm making out of that group of seven, if I were calling the people in that group A, B, and C, it doesn't really matter what order they're in. I'm not being asked if they're in a particular order. I'm just saying, like, how many groups of three? So the group A, B, C is the same as C, B, A. So order doesn't matter. So let me give you an example of how this would look in terms of how to actually do it. So let's say I was going to talk about the five people in five chairs. Uh, again, this is a permutation. So what I would personally do is draw the five chairs and think about each chair. So the first chair, we have five potential people to put in it. The second chair, though, we only have four because one is already seated in the first chair. In the third chair, we have three people left to choose from. In the second chair, well, not the second chair, but when there's two chairs left, there's two, and the final chair, there's one possible person to get how many ways we can arrange five people in five chairs. Therefore, we just multiply them all, and we get 120. So again, uh, this is ways and arrangements, order mattered, so we just kind of had to multiply. Now one little, might as well bring this up, a restriction. Like let's say if the people, uh, if we had the people, let's call these people really creative names here for these people, A, B, C, D, and E. And I said to you, okay, well there's a catch. I, I want you to see, seat these five people in five chairs, but person A has end of phobia. They cannot be on the end because they're scared of the end of the row. Okay, so anytime we have a restriction, we want to place the restriction first. So place the restriction first. That means the person A really only has three potentials. You know, these three chairs. And I know I put them on the end, even though I said I, I couldn't, but that's not really the end of the row. It's just kind of like how many potential spots does A have? A has three potential spots, and we have to place the restriction first. So I'm going to think about person A first. Person A has three possibilities. Now, we, when we get to the next chair, there's four people left, four possibilities. Next chair, there's three people, two, and one. So we have something very similar to the first problem we did, but we get a different answer if we place person A some, at some other time. You know, if we waited till the end to place person A, that wouldn't work. So we want to have that person, the restriction person, if there is one, be in the first slot and then calculate everybody else. So it looks like that would be, I don't know, 24 times 3. I should probably just know what that is. That looks like that's 72 potential things. Okay, so just a couple basics of permutation. Now let's look at a combination problem. The way that I like to teach combination is this formula. The big number factorial over the little number factorial times the big number minus the little number factorial. Okay, so let's go back to my other example. Like, from a group of seven, I want to choose three. Um, so the big number is seven. So I would have seven factorial, which is seven times six times five times four times three times two times one over the little number factorial. The little, the little number is three. Three times two times one. The big number minus the little number, 7 minus 3, is 4, so that's 4 factorial. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And a lot of times when you're doing this kind of thing, things cancel, right? Because the numerator and denominator of the fraction have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we end up with, we end up with 42 times 5, that's 210 over 6. And I think if we do that math... I feel like I should just know the answer to that for some reason, but hey, oh well. Okay, 35. 
35 potential groups of 3, I can make it a 7. One more thing, just a quick bonus here for you. If I had, go back, going back to uh, this chair question, what if, what if, uh, and I'll draw it down here, what if I had the same five chairs, this is again permutation, how many ways can I fit nine people in five chairs? Just do that. Nine potentials for the first, eight for the second, seven for the third, six for the fourth, five for the fifth, and multiply them all. So hopefully this gives you a, a little bit of a basis for how to do these kinds of questions. Look at, look at the wording to try to tell what you're dealing with. And I like my way of teaching combination formula. In permutation, I, I, I don't really use a formula. I just kind of draw the slots. Remember, if you have a restriction, place it first. And hope that helps.